Hi everyone, welcome to the Sharing European History self-guided course. My name is Eugenie and I am EuroCLIO's Operations Coordinator and Project Manager. And uh, thank you for joining. So the Sharing European self-guided course is part of the Sharing European uh, Histories project. And the, the Sharing European Histories project is all about teaching strategies on European history. Throughout the project, five teaching strategies were developed by a team of researchers, of teachers and curriculum developers. All five strategies are now available on our website in nine different languages and five more translations will be added very soon. The self-guided course will dive into all these five strategies with local teachers and local experts across Europe to see how they use the strategy to create and implement a lesson plan in their classroom. And today in this session, we will dive into the teaching strategy of life stories or stories from the past. It's called Using Stories of the Past to Teach Students About Its Complexity. It's developed by Helen Snelson. And today, Anna Stavkovic will show us how she has used the strategy uh, to create her own lesson plan. So Anna, very good uh, to see you here. Welcome. Anna is a historian and teacher trainer with experience as a history and civics teacher, both at the elementary school level and high school level. She also has experience as a museum curator and the main field of her academic area of interest is Ottoman studies. She's also one of the authors and the trainers of the two day program called Joining Forces to establish schools as democratic communities for school employees. She's also experienced as a peer educator in the field of career guidance, reproductive health and mental health, as well as human rights and inclusion through her work at the Career Info Center and the Youth Counseling Center in Leskovac. Um, Anna, thank you very much once again. I, am, um, I really look forward to see how you um, interpreted this strategy and how it helped you in creating your lesson plan. And um, yeah, I suggest we just get started. Thank you, hello everyone. Thank you, Eugenie, for this wonderful introduction. And it is a pleasure to be here and to be part of the Sharing European Histories project. So I'm also looking forward to see how this, this self-guided course will go on. Thank you. So before we um, dive into the teaching strategy and, uh, and, the, the, and Anna's lesson plan, I will just very briefly um, uh, yeah, share some very practical information about the course itself. Um, so in addition to these sessions on the teaching strategies, the self-guided course also consists of three live reflection sessions. And during these live reflection sessions, the authors, the authors of Sharing European Histories will actually uh, yeah, join us and reflect on their own strategies, so on the teaching strategies that they created. You can find more information about the project, about uh, the teaching strategies, and about the self-guided course in the links provided in the description below the video. So the live stories or stories of the past teaching strategy uses the memories of people across the continent, across Europe, to get students to see that people experience the same time or the same event in many different ways. The strategy is based on the collection of live stories of individuals from either different parts of the country or, uh, or different parts of the continent or from uh, the same country about the same time or period. And this collection of live stories could introduce students to an unfamiliar period and encourage them to gain their own sense of period behind the version that is presented in their textbooks. The strategy is primarily aimed at teaching diversity. It will also show us how despite living different histories across the continent, there's also a vast, um, yeah, vast amount of experiences that we actually do share and that we do have in common. And finally, the strategy will also help students to see the difference between history and memory and understand the constructed nature of history. Anna, I would like to, to, to give the floor to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the implementation of Helen Snelson's uh, strategy, I chose the teaching unit uh, about the Second World War 
about uh, everyday life and suffering in the Second World War, and it's called World War II, Ordinary People. Uh, in my country, we have uh, school hours lasting uh, 45 minutes each. So this teaching unit is uh, for two school hours. The time needed is 19 minutes or more if someone has more time. Uh, in my country, this teaching unit is taught in the last eighth grade of elementary and uh, the second, third or fourth grade of secondary school, depending uh, on the type of school and the curriculum. The optimal number of students for organizing uh, these activities in this lesson plan is 24 or 30, although all the activities can be adjusted to the real number of students. And we can go on the next slide to see the main aim of this uh, lesson plan. The main aim is to help students to engage with the complexity and differences in everyday life of ordinary people in Europe during the Second World War, from 1939 until 1945. And here we can see listed also the learning objectives from which uh, learning outcomes arise. So at the end of these two school hours, uh, students will find out how everyday life looked like during the Second World War. They will reveal which were the main topics ordinary people were thinking and talking about during this period. They will be able to compare everyday life of people from different groups and countries. During this period, they will also understand the meaning of terms such as the Holocaust, war crimes, ghetto, concentration camp, and they will be also able to analyze the position of the author by comparing different sources about the same phenomenon or event. Mm -hmm. Also, they will build a critical attitude towards historical sources and remembrance. And the last but not at least, uh, they will feel the difference between sources and evidence. Can we go on? Uh, the first class uh, has four activities. The first activity is individual reading. So for this activity, we need to have prepared stories from witnesses during the Second World War. Each student gets a copy of one story and he has time to read it and to focus on two questions and one re request. Uh, one question is who is the main character of the story? The second question is when and where the story happened, if the information is available in the story, and uh, the request is to summarize the story in one or two sentences. After that, in the next activity, students are split into groups. So in every group, we have students that have read different stories. Uh, the point of this group work is uh, to share information about the stories the students have read and to do common chronological and special orientation and to find similarities and differences between the stories. They can work it uh, in one worksheet or they can just do it in free form in piece of paper. It doesn't matter. After exchanging information, uh, all groups will present their timeline, their map, and their worksheet or list of paper with similarities and differences between stories to the plenum. And after that, the final activity of the first class is the discussion. Uh, we can see on the next slide uh, key topics and key questions for this discussion. So the point is that students have a chance to notice how the same period can have different perspectives mm -hmm due to the large number of factors. So we have here about questions about who affected, who is affected by the events, uh, how important was the place, the age of person, who is the main character, what are other factors, how does the time period influence on the person's thoughts and actions and so on. At the second class, we can see on the next slide the organization of that class. Uh, we have three activities. 
uh, the first activity can be given as a homework if you want to spare time for discussion, or you, that can be the first activity of the second class. So students have tasks to individually compare stories from the past with official perspective given in their text. And they are guided through three questions. We can see them on the next slide. What was the intention of the text? book authors and set of the storytellers who is the most relevant person to speak about and are there more or less important stories in the past. The second activity and the main activity of the second class is discussion. On the next slide, we can see key questions for this second discussion. The point of this discussion is to distinguish evidences and live stories as a sources, so to find difference between evidence and normal life story from some witness. And you can see here the main questions for this discussion. The last activity is short lecture. So the focus is on teacher now. Uh, the lecture lasts about 10 minutes and it can be followed by PowerPoint presentation. Here we can see some slides from my presentation. Uh, I decided to highlight some terms like war crime, crime against humanity, genocide, holocaust. You can also see here the map of concentration camps in Europe. And you can see one picture, my picture from the Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. And we can go on to the sources. Yeah, I'm, I, Anna, I know that you have collected quite a lot of life stories uh, for, um, yeah, for the lesson plan. So I'm just very curious uh, what you selected and also why you selected these specific sources? Well, along uh, with this lesson plan, I prepared 14 stories mm -hmm. from different countries, Great Britain, Turkey, Romania, Poland, Yugoslavia, Greece, uh, Spain, Italy. So there is a variety of stories from different witnesses, their age, gender, level of education, occupation, interest, religious and uh, political views are so different. One we can see on the right is uh, the statement given to local authorities in 1946 by a Serb peasant, Zagorka. So we have original document here as a source. Uh, I used also as a source YouTube. We can see on the picture Soviet soldier Ilya Bud. Uh, he was talking about his memories from the Second World War, and uh, this story is available on YouTube also. Uh, great resource for stories from Great Britain is BBC's collection. We can see the picture of that website here also on this slide. And also we have Centropa site, it's on the next slide as great source for stories from Jews from all over the Europe. So Centropa is really something amazing. I also used some secondary sources for adapting some sort of stories. For example, Outlines of Memory. Uh, it is published by the Pilatsky Institute and uh, it collects stories from Poland, for mm -hmm. example. I also have to thank uh, to the descendants of some people uh, they gave me transcripts or audio recordings uh, from their ancestors. Uh, I used them for the stories from Spain and Italy. So that are mostly the sources I used. Original documents, uh, some websites, audio uh, recordings, transcripts, and some publications like Outlines of Memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fascinated by, by the sources that you collected. Um, I think what perhaps might be interesting for the audience is if we could link um, all the sources that you used and all the, the useful websites uh, in, in the description as well, so people can have a look at it uh, later on um, as well. So thank you very much, Anna, for, for showing us your, your lesson plan. Um, I think it was very, very interesting. And yeah, I know the, the, the work that you've put into it. So yeah, it's, it's really impressive to see. And um, 
yeah, so in, in the second part of this session, I would just like to um, ask a few very practical questions about, about creating the lesson plan, about the sources, but also about, yeah, how, how it just works in practice uh, to, to work with the strategies um, to, yeah, hopefully uh, give a little bit more insight uh, to, to the audience. So let me just first start with a very, very simple but very practical question. Um, did you find the strategy uh, very practical and easy to use? How, like, did you did you spend a lot of time creating the lesson plan? Well, I can see that the strategy is very simple, but I must admit that at the same time it's also very demanding. Mm -hmm. In order to apply it, the teacher needs to have all the competencies required of a researcher. And also the lesson plan I present, it is very easy to implement it, but only if you have prepared stories from the past and a little pedagogical experience. According to what they said, it doesn't take much time to design a class. It mm -hmm. took me about 15 minutes to design the activities for this unit. However, preparing a story can take much longer. It all depends on what your goals are and how ambitiously you have designed the activities. Collecting stories from different parts of Europe and from the earlier period was as was required for this unit also takes some time and uh, you need to have patience. For example, I was waiting uh, the story from Spain about 10 days, so I didn't have what to do, but I had to wait. While sources for stories from Yugoslavia and uh, Centropa stories about, from Jews, they were at my finger type. And when you have stories, the point is that uh, you need maximum several hours to process them and to standardize the text. The whole process is much faster if you are a teacher whose scientific focus is on the historical period uh, in which this teaching unit fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and just more generally speaking, um, did the sample lesson plan or did the lesson plan that you that you created support your understanding of the strategy? Uh, first of all, uh, the sample that Helen has prepared about the time after the Cold War was really useful for me. And also as a trainer for other teachers on this project, I noticed that concrete examples are much more valuable for them than theoretical presentation of the strategy. And the working on my own lesson plan also helped me to understand better the strategy, the, her essence yeah. and her point, and also to find out what can be improved and what we can do in a different way. Mm -hmm. and, and just about uh, the, 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 of executing the lesson plan in the classroom, did you have any uh, diff difficulties or challenges apart from selecting the, the sources because that's that is of course a lot of work but just also in terms of implementing it in the classroom how um, flexible was the lesson plan so to say to adapt to maybe different levels of your students or yeah did you perhaps find any other challenges uh, well the most uh, of challenges come from time Mm -hmm. One of the challenges is the time distance, because, um, for example, my teaching unit is from the earlier period, and uh, as further you go into the past, it's quite dif more difficult to find testimonies, witnesses, and sources yeah. for life stories. So that's one challenge. The other challenge was that uh, our Ministry of Education has shortened the dur duration of school uh, hours. So we didn't have uh, 45 minutes for one class, we had 30 minutes. So when I that tried to short. execute this, uh, I had a problem what to do, how to do, uh, but um, with this activity comparing uh, stories uh, with, with per perspective from textbooks uh, given as homework, I succeeded to work and to do all I have planned in 60 minutes, so in two classes, but in shortened version. And the other challenge is also uh, when we are speaking about sources, 
uh, the language barrier. Uh, it is a little bit difficult because not all our, of our witnesses are speaking English, nor we are speaking all European languages, and the translation services are quite expensive for teachers in general and for us teachers in the Balkan in particular. So that's one also of the obstacles. Mm -hmm. Right. And... Um... What, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also very curious about um, the, the reaction of your students. Um, I'm curious about the student perspective on the lesson plan. I know you executed this already in class. Um, so despite the, the challenges that you just elaborated on, how was the lesson received by your students? What do you think they got out of the lesson? Well, I did it in eighth grade of elementary school, and uh, most of the students found this way of working interesting, especially the stories themselves. Mm -hmm. I got the impression that they would be more interesting even in the subject if the textbooks offered more stories from the everyday life, like this one in this teaching unit, and less official facts that are still present in the textbooks uh, used in Serbia. One of my goals was to encourage the development of empathy in students. Mm -hmm. so I directed the discussions towards that way, and there I encountered sharply divided reactions. While most students agreed to put themselves in the role of the main protagonists for a moment, there also were those who firmly held the view that they had nothing in common with, for example, a British teenager or an Italian soldier, and that mm -hmm. we should not be interested in the other people's lives. Unfortunately, excessive nationalism, which is easily grows into chauvinism, is still present in some adults who pass it on to they, their children, and these children come to school with such attitudes. And I think uh, it is up to us to fight against such a disposition using decent, similar strategies. Yeah, to really uh, encourage students to step in the shoes of, of the live stories, of the people that are, um, that are in the live stories. Yeah, I think that's, that's really interesting. Um, also very challenging, I imagine. Um, yeah, <laughs> very, very challenging. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we're almost, uh, almost heading uh, to, to the end of this session. So just to, uh, to wrap it up a little bit, how does this uh, compare to other strategies that you might have developed or might have worked with in, in the past? Well, despite the fact that I have experience working with both primary and secondary school mm -hmm. students and teachers, I'm still practically at the beginning of my career. So the strategies presented in this project uh, were really useful for my further work. Yeah. And I'm happy, again, to be part of this project. Uh, I'm satisfied for this moment uh, that I have opportunity to try strategies devised by experts with much more experience, like Helen, Gentian, Elizabeth, Juan Carlos, and Joanna. Mm -hmm. And their examples are very interesting and shed a new light on my teaching practice. So I, I don't have my own strategies that I can compare with this one, but I can say that this one is really easy to apply and uh, it can be easily applied also both in school and online classrooms. That's mm -hmm. one of her main advantages. If you have more time or realize project teaching, you can give students complete life stories of people with an emphasis on a certain period such as the stories of Jews that are on the Centropa website. Mm -hmm. In some other classes, I noticed that the students connect much better with the, the main characters of the stories when they have their picture or, or their photography. So that can be one of my advices for mm -hmm. teachers to use also photographies of people who are protagonists of the stories if they can, if the pictures okay. are available. Yeah. Also, I can say that if you only have one hour, one school hour, you don't have to give up on this strategy. So I also had that challenge while executing my lesson plan, but it is really possible to do and to apply this strategy in a shorter time. Uh, you can extract testimonies about one key period 
and give in a few sentences to each student for analy analysis and comparison. So it doesn't have to be a long story. It doesn't have to be one paper story that can be one, two, five sentences. You don't have to also apply the strategy on a European scale. For us on the Balkan, it's a lot, a lot more easier to apply it in Balkan context. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be, a, I'm saying, again, in European context. Yeah, in a more national context, maybe. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it will be fine for stories from the past to be from people of the same citizenship and or the same nationality, but of different gender, yeah. age, level of education, occupation, interests, ideological and political views. And I would like to underline again that I applied the strategy on a topic that I wanted to bring closer to the students through a comparative approach but it doesn't have to go always in that way mm -hmm. so stories don't always have to be compared but can also build on each other to create an image of a particular period it would be very interesting to see an example of such variation so mm -hmm. they don't have to be compared and one more thing I can advise um, and I can underline that um, for this strategy, networking is extremely important. I really had support and help of my colleagues all, from all over the Europe. And that our colleagues I have met on previous Euroclio, Centropa and other international seminars. They really gave me really big support and they were my advisors not only when we are talking about implementing this one strategy, but for many other things. So I think the most important part of this strategy and implementing is to have network mm -hmm. and to have people who can help you. And I think uh, the sharing experiences like this one will help us develop creativity both within ourselves and among students. And will help us all break down the prejudices and negative attitudes that are a cause of many conflicts. I uh, I'm very inspired by your words. Um, thank you very much for sharing your very uh, invaluable insights um, to the strategy, to the lesson plan, and uh, yeah, for giving this very important and um, a very helpful advice. Um, with this. Uh, we have come to an end of this session. And um, so, Anna, once again, thank you very much. I, it's very impressive, um, like I said earlier, to see uh, all the work that you have, uh, that you have done um, in creating the lesson plan and also your contributions to the project, uh, more generally speaking. And um, yeah, and to, to the audience, um, you will find all the all the links and and everything that we covered uh, during this session uh, below in the description of the video. And like uh, we said earlier, we will also share some of the sources that Anna used. So um, yeah, you can have a look at these. And um, yeah, for now, thank you very much. And uh, will we yeah we will meet again very soon. <laughs>